All right, so today's episode, we're going to go back to what we started with, looking at some of the comics. And we know that Rebirth is coming, so we're going to take a step back and look at what came before it, being the New 52. And I'm going to be looking at this more in the volume section of the trade paperbacks, because that's a little easier to get your hands on instead of tracking down individual issues. So we're going to be looking at Volume 1, Last Daughter of Krypton, by Michael Green. It's an origin book, so origin books can always be tough. You know, some of the other New 52 st- titles just started with the character in full go, but this we're looking at as an origin. The, it begins with the landing of her ship, and Superman showing up. And she, once again, doesn't realize who he is, which is kind of, she sees a symbol, but she's in the mindset that Cal um, should be a baby. And so with that in mind, she's trying to process everything, because the last thing that she has a memory of is her dad and her talking about the trials, and with the trials, her being able to wear the family crest. Um, you know, but Supergirl and Superman begin fighting. Go figure. And they move the fight away. And Kara is trying to process all this when we get introduced to Simon Taicho, who's a go figure billionaire scientist person who has created something he calls the brain. And with that, he sent people in in mech suits to fight Supergirl. To kind of draw her out. And it's a very interesting because we see he wants, he puts her like through a gauntlet of trials and errors. We learn that Argo City was where Zorel was attempting to save. Okay. And we learn that there was flashbacks of Kara training for the trials, but Zorel basically knocked her out, drugged her. And put her in the ship to save her, despite Alora trying to stop. Uh, you know this. It jumps to where we meet a world killer, which has been a Krypton destru- weapon of destruction, a genetically enhanced person who fights Kara, and Kara then has to stop her. And it, the book ends with Kara staying there after stopping Rain, the world killer thinking to herself, she could do this. Now, Volume 1 is just a lot of starter. Now, I give it a 3 out of 5 because it is an origin book that's so tied. But it's a good start. And I'm going to go ahead, we're going to discuss Volume 2. Because each volume gets better and better as the books progress. Volume 2 picks up right where the first one left off, and it's entitled Girl in the World. And Kara is being threatened by these military people from where she just stopped Rain. And with Rain being stopped, and I mean, you saw, if you'd see somebody with a Superman symbol, you'd kind of think maybe they're with Superman. Just a thought. But out of the ashes, this woman runs in and basically points out, hey, she saved us. Why are you doing this? And Kara grabs her and they fly off. And that person is... Siobhan Smythe, good old Siobhan, little punk rocker girl here, and we all know who Siobhan is, as she'll become the Silver Banshee. Now, I want to say, with this volume, go read it. It's a very interesting, unique take on Silver Banshee. And, like, I want to do my reviews, but you know what? I want to talk about them and give you the the chance to really go and get into the material. Uh, there's a lot of twists and turns with the origin of Silver Banshee here. And we get more of Kara's background. We see more with Zorel testing his plan. And we see um, 
that Simon Taicho is not dead, as we envisioned. He has come together with the red crystal from Kara's ship, and he's being used by Zorel to kind of make her own little place under the water, almost her own little fortress from part of her ship that her and Cal had discovered. So it's a much more interesting read than Volume 1. So what I say is, if you get a chance, check it out. All right, and we'll keep continuing these quick reviews here. The third volume entitled Sanctuary, which picks up right where the other one left off with Kara in her underwater, basically her own fortress of solitude, entitled, you guessed it, Sanctuary. Sanctuary has a program that is coded to her voice. So basically, Simon tries to trick her and wants to take over it. She tells Sanctuary to not allow anyone who's non Kryptonian or her in. So Sanctuary basically encases Simon. Now that's interesting, right? Um, Tara then uses it to contact Siobhan, and we find out that something's going on with Siobhan. She is holding back her powers or some sort of secret from Kara. Now here's where the book gets a little dicey because this is the first major crossover of the super titles being Superman, Action Comics, Supergirl, and Superboy. And this is where we get Ha'el on Earth. So we get the Supergirl chapters of that story. But the basis is Ha'el is a Kryptonian, claims to be a Kryptonian, um, who wants to go back in time and stop Krypton and starts using Kara uh, for his his services, because basically he talks her into that's the only way. And she believes him because she thinks she falls for it, but she wants to go home. He doesn't tell her everything, but we learn bits and pieces of his story in the Supergirl chapters. In this, as Ha'el is trying, um, Supergirl fights against the Flash and fights against Wonder Woman, both who try and stop her until she just learns of Ha'el's true plan, which is basically that he can use the Earth's sun to power his machine to go back in time and it will destroy Earth. And one of the things that we don't get in this chapter that we get, um, uh, in another one of the tie-in books, is that Supergirl stops Ha'el by stabbing him with kryptonite, but it gives her Kryptonian uh, kryptonite poisoning. Now, this part here gets really interesting. And this is why this is one of my favorites, is we get to meet Karen, who saves Kara. And Karen is Power Girl. Now, in the New 52... Power Girl is from Earth 2. She is Kara zor of Earth 2. Now her and uh, Huntress, who is Helena Wayne, both, uh, if you read Earth 2, Volume 1, they both come during the attack when Superman, Wonder Woman, and Batman are killed. Uh, Supergirl and Huntress, which I cannot remember if she was Nightwing or Robin or what Helena's identity was on Earth 2. Because when they get to Earth 1, they adopt Huntress and Power Girl. And they've been here for a while. So Karen and Kara meet and have this unique bond. Because they are the same person. Karen is a little older than Kara. And basically, during the battle with this crazy monstrous thing, Karen's suit is damaged. And she goes to Sanctuary with Kara and gets the regular, basically generic Power Girl suit. And then things get crazy when Sanctuary thinks that one of them is a clone. And then tries to say that Kara is the clone because she's younger. So basically they have to destroy Sanctuary. So what's was Kara's home, her place on Earth? is now destroyed because it turned against her. 
and that leaves her and Karen now as friends. So this this book I rate higher than the others. All right, so we're continuing in Supergirl Volume Four, Out of the Past. Now this is another volume that has some crossover it's in it, and I just read it and I got it right here in front of me. So it is a little tricky, but the main just of the story. And I'll sum this one up, because I don't want to go into this, this is really interesting. But basically, Kara leaves Earth, she's in space, and she gets on a planet where they have the ability with this metal to recreate things from memory. Well, she runs into the cyber cyborg Superman. And the big thing with this, because this is the volume that falls into Forever Evil, is you find out that Cyborg Superman is, in this world, actually jor I mean Zorro. Brainiac came to Krypton and wanted Jor-El, but since he didn't have him, he took Zorro and basically made him into a version of Jor-El. Zorro had used Brainiac's technology to try to save his city, Argo City, and that caused everyone died but Zorro, and it caused him to show up and transform him into the Cyborg Superman. So it makes for a very interesting read. Like I said, I don't want to get too much into everything because there's some crossover towards the end. But the fact that Kara loses her body and Zorel realizes what he's done and who he is and then decides to take on Brainiac himself, it's very interesting. This is um, leading up to the next arc, which is. Supergirl as the Red Lantern. And we'll get to that as soon as we get to that. But overall, I give this book about a three and a half or a four. This uh, New 52 Supergirl rereading it like this straight shows a very tight story. She doesn't get to interact as much with other characters in her own book. You know, there's the crossovers with the uh, Superboy, Superman um, that we saw. So we'll continue our journey together. All right, fellow Kryptonians, how's it going? We're going to take a venture into the next chapter, which is Supergirl, Volume 5, The Red Daughter of Krypton. Now, to me, this is the volume that speaks really high to Kara's, just her emotional endeavors. You know, as we've learned that the rage is what powers Red Lanterns. And in this book, Kara demonstrates how she just doesn't belong anywhere. She doesn't fit in anywhere. You know, everyone lies to her. This book opens with her taking on Lobo, and we won't even discuss the New 52 Lobo. We're going to skip over that. But just how everyone's kind of taken their own idea and used Kara... And just how she feels. And when the Red Rings are sent out, one bonds to her. It even causes her to have to battle um, Siobhan. Causing Siobhan to release the Silver Banshee inside her. Now we learn that Guy Gardner is the leader of the Red Lanterns. And they're now basically patrolling Earth. And Kara hooks up with them after, you know, meeting with... uh, She meets Hal Jordan... Uh, they they meet Superman. Superman even tells her, like, you know, this is for her to go and do herself. And she just basically has to face what it is that's destroying her, because the red ring bonds with the heart, and you can't just take it off or it'll destroy the person who wears it. So we see that, and we see that Kara fights the first ever... And it gets a little confusing... Where she fights the first ever world killer. And then she destroys it, and it's a cybernetic suit of some sort that was with the world killer, and tries to bond to her. She rips off the ring, because uh, he's connecting to people and destroying them. He wants her. It's crazy because she basically tries to throw him in the sun. She falls into the sun, pulls off the ring, it heals her, she gets the ring off, and she knows who she is. 
So this book is more about identity with Kara. And it's a nice little change of pace. I thought if anyone was going to be a Red Lantern, that having Supergirl be a Red Lantern, being basically the best of Superman and Green Lantern, how much more powerful could she get? So I, I definitely recommend this volume of the series. And here we are, Supergirl, the New 52, final chapter, Crucible. This book opens with the first issue being the Supergirl tie-in to the Superman event, Superman Doomed. We are introduced to a character of Michael, which is a wheelchair-bound young man who has the uh, interest, should I say, love interest of Kara. And we are introduced in that issue. She finds Michael's parents. The issue ends with Brainiac, which ties into Superman Doomed. And then the next issue ties is a Supergirl Red Hood team up. The artwork is pretty awesome in this one. And that one just kind of throws you for a loop because it came out of nowhere for me. But it was cool to see Jason Todd and Supergirl interact. And then the next one is the Crucible arc. It begins where Clark visits Kara, where she's working as a, in a coffee shop, and basically talks about her needing to be part of a team and train. And so she goes to a school in space called Crucible Academy, where they train people to be the best that they can be for their world. And she's learning to cope. She's learning new skills. Superboy shows back up. That isn't a mystery is it in itself, but fun to see what happens. We get to see her in full in full Kryptonian armor. And it's just an all-out brawl as people are wanting to use Superboy against her. They want to use it with her. Her and Superboy reconciled. Um, the last official part of the series is Kara returns to Earth after graduating of Swords Crucible. And she cuts herself and realizes that she's bleeding. And she says, what's happening? I'm turning human. And that's where the New 52 Supergirl ends. They didn't take Supergirl into the DCU, which is where Superman lost his power. We see her again as he shows up in the crossover that's going on the last days of Superman right now. But there is a one-shot issue at the back, which is the Future's End Cyber Superman Supergirl story, which is pretty interesting. And, of course, the Future's End was a whole weird spectacle. But, you know, that's for you guys to decide what you think. This is our quick look back at the New 52 Supergirl as we are on the verge of Rebirth. And I'm actually really looking forward to seeing where we're going to go with Supergirl and Rebirth. And uh, we'll be talking Rebirth here shortly. So remember, look up in the sky. <laughs>